nuclear power is expected to get a big lift from the new Inflation Reduction Act. The law sets aside $30 billion in tax credits to existing nuclear power plants, extending the life of more than 60 percent of U.S. reactors, a threat of being decommissioned. Our next guest is leading the development on the next generation of those reactors and recently became the first in the U.S. to get regulatory approval for its design of small modular reactors. Let's bring in John Hopkins. He is the CEO and president of New Scale. John, let's start with sort of what exactly SMRs are. I mean, in the simplest terms, how are small modular reactors different from existing reactors that are online? Well, small from a New Scale module, it's uh, it, the entire package, including containment, it's, it's 77 feet tall, 15 feet in diameter, and it generates 77 megawatts of electricity and they're scalable. So the, the, the definition of small by is generally below 300 megawatts. We're at 77, but we can bundle ours and we have the capacity to go up to 900 megawatts with 12 modules. You think about the criticism against nuclear power. Historically, it has been about the concerns around safety, but also cost. So how do SMRs improve that? Well, what we call it is economies of small. Two thirds of the components of a large gigawatt side re reactor, New Steel does not re require. And also our modules will actually be built in a factory as the construction is being built in the field. And so once the construction is completed, then we bring our modules in for deployment. And at the end of the life cycle of six years, we could decommission and to take them out the same way we brought them back in. A significant reduction in cost and labor. Uh, John Brian Chung here. Uh, I want to ask about the uh, kind of immediate political news coming out of D.C. That is, of course, the signing of the Inflation Reduction Act. Uh, give us a little bit of a preview on how that is expected to affect your corner of the industry. I understand tax credits, funding uh, for uh, nuclear, actually a part of that. Absolutely. Uh, our industry is extremely excited about the IRA. The, the tax benefits really available to our customers is going to be critically important to get costs down, as you just commented on. And also there's a phase out period, as you know, 2032, I believe it is. I, I think that's going to promote many of the uh, our current customer base even to think about deploying sooner, particularly in areas where utilities have a lot of, of coal refurbishment or coal coming offline. So you think this is going to accelerate that? that, that I you do, can... I do believe that. Um, this yeah, of course because... Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, I was just saying because of that phase out period, it'll, it'll prompt others, I think, to move quicker than may be otherwise they had planned to do. This, of course, comes at a time when we have seen, um, not just in the U.S., but around the world, a lot of lawmakers give a second look to nuclear at a time when we've seen a big crunch in oil as well as natural gas. You know, the thinking is that, of course, nuclear is the one clean form of energy that can come online. How has that been a boost to you? I mean, you still haven't deployed your technology, but um, have you gotten more interest as people start to think about what that clean energy mix should look like in the future? A absolutely. I, I spoke at COP26 and I felt for the first time that, that advanced nuclear really has a seat at the table now. What they were talking about is hydrogen production or uh, direct air capture sequestration or clean water utilized in uh, desalinization. If you think of those, all of those require a lot of energy. And that energy could be produced and provided by advanced nuclear. We also have the ability to complement renewables. You know, we're 24 seven clean and do the intermittency until storage capacity comes online. Uh, when, when the sun's not shining, the rain's not, I mean, uh, the wind's not blowing, we could help complement and keep and get them at 24 seven. We're excited. Uh, John, in terms of just the commercial applications, because maybe some of our viewers are wondering, you know, what can nuclear do for my home, for example, or my EV in the future? I mean, are there commercial applications there or will, would Americans experience that in different ways in different uh, corners, I guess, of their of their daily lives? No, we're getting um, interest from all over the world. And I mentioned earlier that each module scale, but we just had the Singaporean government visit us. What they want is electricity for their homes in their country, but they also want energy for reverse osmosis desalinization for clean potable water. So the applications, because of the scalability in each unit, each nuclear or new scale module is a separate unit in itself, and it could offer electricity to providing, working with an end user as an example of hydrogen production. All right, John Hopkins, New Scale CEO and President, really appreciate you stopping by Yahoo Finance today. Have a great one. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it as well.